Hmm, what is white, worthless, increases your risk of cardiovascular disease, may increase your risk of kidney stones, may increase your risk of anxiety, and contains some pretty toxic metals that shouldn't be in there in the first place. Hmm, I'm talking about calcium. Now you've learned what it is, you're gonna turn off the video, but let's talk about why this is one of the absolute worst minerals you could be taking and what you can do instead. Let's break this all down. First off, when we look at what the Journal of the American Heart Association even said, they took a look at over 5,400 people with cardiovascular disease risk, and they found that when they increased calcium through their diet, it actually improved their risk of cardiovascular disease. So at first glance, you see that and you're like, I'm gonna run out to the store and get some calcium supplements, seems great. Except they found that calcium supplements actually increased the risk of coronary artery calcium deposits. Why is this? Because calcium, when it's not its true bioavailable form, without vitamin D, without vitamin K2, that's too much calcium in really a wrong kind of form. But that's not even the big part that I want to focus on. Okay, the big part that I want to focus on is that there's some newer evidence that's suggesting that almost all the calcium supplements out there are loaded with lead. What the heck is going on there? The American Public Health Association had published a paper. It analyzed seven different kinds of the leading calcium supplements. They found that they ranged from 0.03 micrograms per gram all the way up to 8.8 .8 micrograms per gram of lead in these calcium supplements. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that lead is not good. Obviously, we have even full lead paint disclosures when we buy a house, at least in California, right? Like, lead is not exactly good. It's a heavy metal that is very hard for our body to get rid of, but it's also a heavy neurotoxin. It affects the brain. It can trigger neurobiological disorders. It affects the central nervous system, which is why it's extra dangerous when you're talking about kids and their brain actually forming. It also has some links with blocking calcium in the first place. So calcium signaling, which is very important for nerve transmission and the overall signal from our brain to various parts of our body, lead impedes that. So it's literally worthless because you're taking in calcium right now, which is loaded with lead. The bottom line with this is that it's not doing you much good, but what about the kidneys? Well, the American Society of Nephrology had published a paper that found that there is an increased risk of kidney stones when calcium supplements were taken did not seem to be the case when it was dietary calcium. What the heck is happening here? So we have to look at this big picture and understand how calcium impacts the body. Now, I still think minerals are important. Personally, I think one of the best ways to get minerals in is going to be through your diet. But the mineral supplementation that I think people should consider taking are going to be magnesium, possibly potassium, depending how active you are, Zinc, if you're focused on the immune system, like 25 to 50 milligrams of zinc, maybe even like a ZMA form if you want, and we should be focusing on getting good quality sodium. These kinds of minerals are really the only ones we probably need to supplement with, maybe copper, depending on the particular case. Iron, again, we don't need to be adding iron in. In most cases, iron is not going to solve the issue. Issues with anemia are usually happening at a different level and iron is just a canary in the coal mine and it's very convoluted. Uh, as far as electrolytes are concerned, it kind of falls into a little bit of a different category. People usually take calcium because they're trying to improve bone integrity and they're trying to get a benefit there, which is not where it would fall into an electrolyte. That's why you don't typically see calcium in electrolyte blends because it's excitatory. It can actually induce more cramping than it can improve cramping. If you're looking for more of an electrolyte, I popped a link down below for our video sponsor, which is Element. That is a good electrolyte to use. That's a link that'll get you a free variety pack of Element electrolytes along with whatever purchase you do. So if you purchase some electrolytes, you get a free sample pack with all the different flavors so you can give one to a friend or you can keep it for yourself and hog it all or do whatever you want, but you get that free one whenever you make any kind of purchase. So that link is drinklmnt.com slash Thomas, drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. But that's really not that relevant because it's a different category, but people always ask. So with calcium, a lot of our foods are fortified with calcium, which brings up some of this lead concern too. Okay, so especially when you're looking at milk that's fortified with calcium and people give milk to kids, so you're essentially giving kids lead. There might even be lead in milk when a brain is forming, triggering potential neurobiological issues. 
we don't want to go down that route. Okay, so be very cautious with the milk that you consume. If you're going to get milk, I would recommend raw milk when you can get it. Okay, S different states have different rules. Uh, otherwise, just kind of have to watch to see what it's fortified with. At least get organic and watch to see if it's fortified. Now, as far as bone health is concerned, it much more comes down to vitamin D and vitamin K2. Vitamin D is best to get through the diet. Although people do like to take a synthetic form of vitamin D, which is most vitamin D out there, I have expressed my concerns as to how it can impact bioavailable retinol A, and also how it's just basically not a true biological form, bioavailable form. So cod liver oil, something like that, to get your vitamin D, your omega-3, and your vitamin A in sort of a nice package is always a good route. Now, as far as vitamin K is concerned, you want to look for vitamin K in what is called MK7 form. Okay, that is a much more usable form by the body. And what this does is this allows vitamin D and calcium to work synergistically and get to the right place. So it allows calcium to go into the bone and it allows it to actually form what it's supposed to form versus kind of left to its own devices throughout the rest of the body. What we have to remember is that calcium and magnesium oppose each other. So if calcium binds to an NMDA receptor in the brain, it can make us feel very excited and get this almost anxiety-like effect. That's one of the reasons why magnesium blocks or binds to that NMDA receptor and actually acts as a bouncer and kind of bounces calcium out of the equation so you don't have so much calcium signaling and excitatory response within the brain. So is it a reach to say that calcium supplements may trigger anxiety? Possibly, but it's also pretty concrete when you look at the mechanistic stuff. Now there was also another study that was published in the journal Neurology that found an association between calcium supplementation and dementia. So this took a look at 700 women without dementia over the course of five years. And what they found is that if they were at risk for cardiovascular disease or stroke, taking in calcium increased their risk of dementia between two and seven X. There's a lot of stuff to unpack with that particular study based upon their previous risk, their previous stroke history, previous uh, cardiovascular event history, but something is going on there that probably has to do with coronary artery calcium scores, might have to do with excitatory neurotransmission within the brain. Either way, it just doesn't make sense to take a calcium supplement. So here's the playbook that I would recommend. Calcium coming from dairy whenever possible. Vitamin D taken midday, like lunchtime, along with a meal. Cod liver oil taken at dinner time with a meal. So you're having a less concentrated vitamin D at night, taking that with a meal. Trying to have most of your calcium rich meals towards the evening time. Dairy does impact sleep, so that's usually a good playbook there. Take straight vitamin K to MK7. Do not get one that is bound to vitamin D unless you absolutely want to take a vitamin D supplement. I would much rather you take a cod liver oil and add direct vitamin K on the side to influence the vitamin D there versus having it bound in a synthetic form with regular synthetic vitamin D. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.